Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company, taking a look at some of the guns that they're going to be selling in their upcoming April of 2018 Premier Firearms Auction. Today we're taking a look at a pretty simple Swiss bolt-action rifle. This is a model of 1897 Cadetengewehr. It is a cadet's training rifle. Uh, and it is based on the Swiss pattern of 1889-96 rifle. So the Swiss had been one of the very first countries to actually adopt a magazine-fed bolt-action rifle, and that was the Vetterli system. But by the 1880s, 1890s, the Vetterli was uh, starting to get a bit obsolete, and they wanted something newer and better. And they also wanted a small-bore rifle. The Vetterli was a 10.6 millimeter slow bullet, black powder, they wanted to get with the modern program here. So they adopted the model of 1889 Schmidt Rubin, which had a remarkable for the time 12 round magazine in it. Uh, the problem was it wasn't the world's strongest action. It was a straight pull uh, bolt action system. It had locking lugs located at the back of the bolt, and that would cause some issues. However, in 1896, uh, they devised a way to improve the bolt system and move the lugs from the back up kind of to the middle, uh, which made the gun notably stronger. They updated almost all of the existing 1889 rifles to 89-96 with a stronger bolt system. And right about that same time, they started looking for a new rifle for the Cadet Corps. Now when we say Cadet Corps here, I'm not talking about, like, boot camp. Uh, what we're talking about is a sort of pre-military uh, teenager high school age cadet corps. Uh, and yeah, there are similar things in most countries across Europe. And until then, until this point, the late 1890s, the cadet corps had been using single shot Vetterli rifles in basically the same sort of configuration. Uh, short, single shot, handy, you know, a little bit lighter and smaller than a full power, full size infantry rifle. But those guns were getting old and they were looking for a new option. And what they came up with was the model of 1897 cadet rifle, based on the 1889-96 infantry rifle. Let's take a quick look at it. The mechanics here are really simple. It's a straight pull bolt action. So open it up. There is no magazine because it's just a single shot rifle, stock solid on the bottom. Drop a cartridge in, close the bolt, and you're ready to fire. Uh, for dry handling, one of the nice advantages of this system is that because it doesn't have a magazine, it doesn't have a hold open tab on the follower, so you don't have to like reach in and push the magazine down to close it every time. Anyway, here's the bolt itself removed from the gun. You can see the locking lugs are up here on the middle of the bolt. Uh, on the early 89 pattern guns, they were back here. Uh, this would continue to be the pattern through the K11 and G11 rifles and carbines. When they went to the K31, they developed a new uh, bolt system that was about half the length and had the locking lugs right up at the front. So a cheaper and stronger system with the K31. One, one other cool element about this rifle is that the sights are actually calibrated for two different cartridges. On the left side here, you can see it goes up to 1,000 on the side and 1,200 on the top of the sight. And that's for standard GP90 ammunition. And that's what the Swiss military was using at this time. Uh, that was a 213 grain lead paper patched bullet, traveling at about 19, just over 1900 feet per second, like 1930. Uh, that's 13.8 uh, grams at 590 meters per second. Uh, that would eventually uh, be changed into GP11, which is the ammunition we're familiar with typically now for all of the later rifles. Uh, GP11 is higher pressure, uh, not strictly interchangeable. It's a lighter bullet, copper jacketed bullet, uh, moving at a higher velocity. However, anyway, I'm getting off track here. For the cadet rifles, they also had a reduced power load for cadets, just to make it a little more pleasant to shoot, easier to teach basic fundamentals with a bit less recoil. That was the exact same bullet traveling at about 1670 feet per second, or 510 meters per second. And what I discovered from Bloke on the Range, actually, if you haven't seen his videos on Swiss rifles, they are definitely worth checking out. But what they did was that, that velocity reduction wasn't accidental. It was very carefully chosen so that the cadet load had a muzzle velocity equal to the velocity of the standard projectile at 100 meters. What that meant is that the cadet sight system, the sight setup here, starts at 200, 
and then goes out to four, two, three, and four hundred meters, but the notches are exactly the same. So the, the ballistic drop for the cadet load from 200 to 400 is exactly the same as the standard load from 3 to 5. You can see on the GP90 side of the scale here, it starts at 3, and then 4, and then goes up to 500 meters. So really quite clever of them to calibrate the uh, reduced power ammunition in that way. Now there aren't any markings on this that specifically call it out as a Model 1897. In fact, none of the Swiss straight pole rifle series have their designations marked on the receiver. However, we do have a serial number here, uh, 20. So of about 8,000 made, this was the 20th, which obviously one of the very, very first ones. And then we have a proof mark and a Swiss property mark up there on the barrel. Note the serial number also on the rear sight. And the rest of this is pretty standard Schmidt-Rubin. Same front sight, stacking rod, bayonet lug. Um, they did have bayonets on these for the cadets so that they could do bayonet uh, drill. The rear band with a sling swivel. Sling swivel also at the rear. And then this typical standard pattern of Swiss butt plate, which is perfectly flat on the top. Um, a little distinctive compared to most other countries. And a straight stock, although they included two little bumps uh, as basically finger grooves. These went into production in 1898, and they would actually stay in production on and off until 1927, believe it or not. Uh, they made just shy of 8,000 of them total, and they would still be using these at least into the early 1950s. So uh, they, they had quite a service life, and they are really nice, handy, light little rifles. And it's pretty cool to be able to see one, especially one as remarkably early as this one, one of the very first ones actually made. So if you have a Swiss rifle collection, this would of course be an important part of it. If you don't have one yet, and you'd like to have this one, take a look at the description text below the video. You'll find a link there to Rock Island's catalog page for this, uh, where you can find their pictures and their description, their price estimate, and everything else you would need to know to place a bid on it right through their website. Thanks for watching.